Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money covered commentator. On today's show, protecting human capital with economic leverage, part three of our series on life insurance for indemnification, income, and inheritance. Well, we're going to do an introduction into life insurance now. I know that inter- that that previous history was pretty good idea to just walk you through a little bit of the mechanics of how we got there. But now we're talking about the three basic planning uh, scenarios that you're going to use. Indemnification for protection and coverage, income for actually a retirement supplement, and maybe even uh, uh, college education, and then inheritance, how I can build a legacy or actually do contributing to uh, a charitable uh, uh, nonprofit or even for my own foundation. Indemnification. Now, I want to indemnify myself all the way down the line. Now, in the family tree, I'm going to have certain people that I'm going to cover. Now, let's just talk a little bit about what we're doing for domestic purposes first. So, human capital of the breadwinner. Now, I might have two breadwinners. I might have one, but I need to take care of people who are the breadwinners. If I have two people working and all their mortgage, their debt, their future obligations are all predicated on two incomes, then i got to insure both breadwinners. I'm going to be looking at some of the major obligations throughout life. And again, I did a show on this called Life Events a couple weeks back. If you want to check that out, you can go ahead and pull it from our archives. Home mortgage is your probably your biggest debt you're going to have for a long time. But it has equity position, hopefully, after the 2008 meltdown. How much that was, I don't know. But you're looking at home mortgage, student loan debt, which is now the largest debt. Next to mortgage, $1.2 trillion in student loan debt. Then you're looking at credit card debt, which is right about a trillion right now as of the, the time of the recording of this. And then a spouse who runs the home. Listen, if your spouse is at home and she's a domestic administrator, let me tell you something. If you're not covering her, you're making a major mistake. It would be almost impossible, literally impossible, to run your home, and especially if you have children, to oversee your children and all that that takes place. It would be almost impossible. And then, of course, We want to use it to also equalize inheritance because not everybody in the family sometimes is equal, whether it's economic, some people are working in the business. We want to look at all these areas of domestic planning purposes. Now, business planning purposes, you can create an estate. Listen, I have no money. I could create a state of nothing. I could go ahead and pay taxes on my death. So why should I pay taxes out of my pocket or on my state when I can, for pennies on the dollar, use life insurance to pay for uh, taxes that are due at death? and fund a business transfer. Everybody that's doing business succession planning is going to be looking at business succession planning. I might have partners. I might have several associates. And we want to indemnify each other so that if something happens to each other, whether it's life insurance or in another case also is disability, I have the funds to go ahead and make the transfer and buy the surviving spouse of my former partner out. So it's really used as a good business transfer idea. And I always say at least have life insurance, term insurance, at the very least, on your partners. Pay off loans at death. It's great to be able to walk in and pay off the bank because my partner, somehow, some way, they had a demise. He had an accident. He's out of the picture now. Pay off loans with the death benefit proceeds. That is a huge idea, and people do that. And, of course, key employees. Some people in here are rainmakers that bring in money into your uh, business, and you definitely want to indemnify yourself. If they, if you lost those people, you'd be hurting. And also, don't forget, key administrators in here. Some people are running the show. They're operational geniuses, and you want to make sure you're covering them as well. I'm looking at wage earners at ho- and home administrators and even covering children sometimes because of my investment inside. I'm actually covering children because I'm putting money together for college education. This could be part of that with a permanent contract. And then you have to kind of look at where are you with your own. If you're a dual income, no kids, you're a you're what I call a dink. If you're dual income raising kids, you're a dirk. If you're single income, no kids, you're a sink. And if you're single income raising kids, you're a circ. So it's dink, dirk, sinks, or circs. What category? And of course, when I share this to you, it's just kind of a humorous acronym that I use to kind of get you to understand and how to categorize yourself. Now, in a business, I have people that bring in the money. They're called rainmakers, are kind of a business euphemism. They, we use rainmakers that generate income. We definitely want to cover them, and we want to be able to take care of them uh, not only for their own retirement, but in case something happened to them before they retired so that we could be indemnified or have income or money replaced 
if something happened to our key rainmakers. It's really important to get into key person insurance when you're a business owner. People that are making it happen for your business are really quality. And you have to start looking at the human capital, not just debt, not just funding the future, but you have to look at human capital. And sometimes your rainmakers are some of the biggest players in your business and you need to cover them. Administrators who run the operation, listen, I know so many businesses that are run, and I'm thinking of this one gal who's 52 years old, that place would be lost without her. And if something happened to her, that, that operation, that business would come to a grinding halt. So I want to be able to not only take care of her for her own personal retirement benefits for her family, but I also want to take care of myself by fully insuring her and making sure that if something happened, I'd be able to hire enough temp help and organizational help to take her place. Nobody can really take a person's place. The one I'm thinking of, it would be impossible to actually take her place. You could only succeed her. You couldn't replace her. And then, of course, business owner's succession plan. You have to have a business owner's succession plan funded, and I say, by life insurance on the death benefit side and by a disability policy on the other. I'm looking at stock redemption, wait and see trusts. We're looking at buy-sell agreements and cross-purchase. All four of those, which make up about 90% of the succession planning done in businesses, those represent those four, and they all should be funded with life insurance. Again, at the minimum term, you remember, you can still get 30-year term out of 50-year-old, so you're covering almost all the time of employment. It's really important to do this, and in my view, one of the great indemnification issues. One of the things you want to think about as well is when you're looking at indemnification and you're trying to protect all the earners, remember... There's a human value, and I have a calculation for this. If you say, Steve, I'd love to see this, I have a calculator that you can actually quantify a human value, the human life. When you look at people that actually die early in their life and there's a lawsuit brought because of the death, they'll figure out what they were earning, basic inflation, basic uh, raises. They'll calculate how long they would have worked. And by the way, some of the young people that are under 40 now, you're going to be looking at the new mark to mark somewhere around age 70, not 865. So I'm looking at the human value, my earnings ability, the raises that I might have accrued, and all the things that I need to find out. What is that number so that I can replace it? Think about it. We, we try to pay off our debts with life insurance. Good thing. We try to fund our future obligations, <laughs> weddings, uh, college education, or retirement. But don't forget, we have to fund, refund income. One of the biggest places that people do not do protection or indemnification is income. I have to satisfy the human capital, make sure I've done that correctly before I do anything else, then go ahead and take care of my debts and my future obligations. Those things to me are very important. So keep in mind, human value is something. If you say, Steve, I'd like to see that calculation. If you'll just write me at steve at lifesizesolutions.com, I'm happy to send it to you, and you can go ahead and calculate your own human value. Don't forget to watch our next segment on Tax Advantage Income, part four in our series on life insurance for indemnification, income, and inheritance. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or your financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game.